Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity, and this is your weekly update. It's Saturday, October 17th, 2015, and man, what a week we've had. Amazing things are happening across the world. Now, you wouldn't know that if you were watching, say, the U.S. equity markets or even the European equity markets or Japan's, because they're all locked together now by some force that we don't quite understand. But one way we could understand that force is that there is a topping process happening right now where if you thought you saw and understood the topping process in the markets in 2000, that was a big long topping process, right? And then it led to a pretty big decline. And then we had the same thing. Remember, the key event before October 2008, which is when the stock market broke, was a big, gigantic ripple and hiccup in the credit markets around some financial institutions in August of 2007. This time, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the ending of a worldwide credit bubble that involves all the major countries and has been blowing since the late 1970s, uh, early 1980s, depending on how you count. So this is going to be a really big, long process because it's going to require the markets really giving up a, a multi-decade long dream. And we're starting to see that dream break in a couple of places. A nice article by Adam Taggart got picked up widely, got some great support from insiders in Silicon Valley where Adam was noting his backyard, his turf, the place where he cut his teeth is in Silicon Valley around the tech operations going on there, noting that uh, money is getting harder to come by and people aren't funding the so-called unicorns as uh, freely anymore. Those are companies with huge valuations, over a billion dollars, but no revenues, no earnings, nothing to really poke a stick at and say, this is why this company is worth a billion or more dollars. So we're starting to see cracks appearing in the tech bubble and we've gotten confirmation from some insiders who are there who run very large VC or venture capital firms saying, yeah, that's where we're at in this cycle. So uh, we're seeing that there. We're seeing as well as we look across the world, Brazil. Brazil just got downgraded to deeper junk status on its sovereign debt. It had a 4.7% year over year decline in its economy. I think it's going even worse than that. Of course, they are a commodity exporting country. Their currency is doing poorly. So why is all that happening? Because of China. China is still trying to convince all of us, you too, that they're going to grow at 7% this year, but their imports, imports were down 20% year over year, exports down 5%. Uh, you can't be importing and exporting vastly lower amounts and still be growing at 7%. So there's a fiction there. Everybody knows it's a fiction. We're just going to wait and see how far along that has to go. Now, uh, another news, really big report came out, another leak, another insider. You might have missed this. And if you, if you were reading U.S. news, you probably missed this unless you went to the edge, the fringe uh, of the blogs and, and fringe of the mainstream media. Secret documents around the United States drone program were released. Now, when you read about drone programs in the, in the United States newspapers, they say, oh, we had a successful drone strike. It's usually on page B23, and it says, we, you know, we killed the target we were going after in several militants. Well, with the release of these documents, we know that inside the organization of the, of the Defense Department and also the Obama administration and prior to that, the Bush administration, they knew that they had about a 90% failure rate, meaning they killed the wrong people 90% of the time, or they killed completely innocent people 90% of the time. And this should be really big news, that a country has decided for itself two things. The first is that terrorists are the worst thing ever. In fact, we've seen sixth graders in this country charged with terrorism. People who ordinarily would have been called criminals are being branded terrorists because there's nothing worse than terror. Well, what's terror? Terror seems to be killing people for a political aim. That's its old definition. Now it just seems to be if you do something that's vaguely illegal, that's terrorism. What could be more illegal than flying over a country and mistargeting innocent people and killing them from the sky and afar, judge, jury, executioner? That program should be giant news in the United States because it, it speaks to the, the moral decay. When a country takes upon itself, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these pie in the sky uh, people who, who doesn't understand that, that you know, underneath the, the surface, a lot of crazy things happen since Machiavelli's time and before, right? Uh, you know, there's black, black uh, operations, wet works, all that stuff, I get that. But when a country openly says our policy our stated policy is to target people and to take them out with um, knowing that we get it wrong probably about mm, one out, nine out of ten times. 
that's a really big step. And of course, I see that same lack of moral compass uh, really infecting a lot that's going on in the United States. So all you have to do is crack open a book that talks about uh, end of empire, decline of empires, how do empires end. They, they really begin to end when they lose their moral footing. People can no longer articulate why we do what we do. It's just this is what we do and the ends justify the means, all of that stuff. So that's really where we are in this story. Now, um, to talk about that moral decay in a microcosm, you know one of the things I've been talking about a long time is the manipulation in the precious metals markets, right? Gold and silver, see them slammed all the times. To be fair, I see other markets that are just as manipulated, oil markets, sometimes corn, but much, much less so. But gold and silver, particularly silver, really have caught my attention um, because of these late night, Sunday night slams where somebody steps in big and just assaults the price. And they do that to move the price. That's why they do these, these attacks late Sunday night. Very thin markets and you can really get a big bang for your buck. It's clearly price manipulation. Never investigated in the, by the SEC. Under Bush, under Obama, doesn't matter which administration it is. Nobody's interested in looking at this. But we have um, a new two-part report at Peak Prosperity by Dave Fairtex, who he's just, uh, I love this guy, he takes really fair, honest looks. If he can't find it in the data, he's not interested in, in following any particular line of reasoning. So he took a good, hard look at the data and asked the question, do we see evidence of manipulation in the gold and the silver markets? The answer is yes and yes, both markets, we can find it. His conclusion is, it's not that often, but when it happens, it's completely obvious. Like that April 2013 slam for gold, which started Sunday night, lost $150 right there in the overnight markets. That would be an example of one of these times. It clearly says somebody big steps in and really assaults these markets. Um, that to me is just a, another clear sign that this is a world where we have to be prepared for what's coming next. We have to understand that. The people who are in power will do whatever it takes to stay in power. They will cast a blind eye if the malfeasance is something that goes in the direction they would like it to go. And they'll be really harsh and increasingly harsher on people whose malfeasance goes against the official story. So it goes, right? So you see people arrested for jaywalking in Ferguson. You see people get away with uh, lying a nation into war on the other end of the spectrum. So that's really where we are. This is really an empire story. Fascinating to watch. We're tracking all of this at Peak Prosperity. So come on by. If you haven't yet, subscribe right here. And, uh, and we'll keep you updated with this. But uh, for now, have a great weekend and keep an eye on the markets. Thank you. I'm Chris Martinson. I'll see you next time.